Thank you, everybody. The governor is going to have to leave in about five minutes. He was kind enough to really rearrange his schedule so that he could come here and be with us tonight, which is wonderful, and we really appreciate it. I feel like I've worn a spot in the in a particular uh, part of the rug here on the stairs. Um, I want to thank Patricia and Jay for once again opening their, their home. Martha is tonight um, not going to be here. She's at a prayer service at Morningstar Baptist Church in Mattapan. And with the mayor's passing, with Mayor Menino's passing today, they decided to dedicate it to, uh, to him. And, uh, and Martha wanted to be there. And I think that's the right place for her to be. I think you all know his um, extraordinary reputation for getting out and, and, and meeting people and being everywhere. Uh, the number of people who over the course of 20 years um, say they have shaken his hand is something like 40% of the population in Boston, <laughs> which is uh, uh, extraordinary. Um, it, to me, it's all about seeing the people behind the line items, behind the policies, um, understanding that they're human souls with struggles and aspirations, triumphs and failures on whose behalf we work. Um, I don't know how many of you know what the Cori system is, but it's our system of criminal records, uh, criminal offender uh, records, and um, we got Cori reform done, I think, four or five years ago now. And I signed the bill, and I remember this guy handing me his cell phone and saying, talk to my friend. So all this chaos, and I take the cell phone, and I said, hello, and he said, Governor, I want to thank you for the bill. This is going to make a difference in my life. So I said, well, thank you, I'm glad, and I handed the phone back, and that was that, until last Tuesday. Last Tuesday, I was out in Springfield, so we went by a restaurant um, that's down by the Basketball Hall of Fame, and we ordered takeout, and uh, we were waiting for the, um, for the burgers to come and standing at the front, mostly empty restaurant, and a guy in Chef's Togs walked up, and, uh, and he did a double take. And he said, are you Governor Patrick? And I said, I said, yes. And he said, do you remember signing the Cory Bill? And I said, of course I remember signing the Cory Bill. He said, do you remember talking to a guy on a cell phone that day? I said, well, come to think of it, I do. He said, I was that guy. He said, I was in jail when I was talking to you. He said, I got out, and on account of Cory reform, I got this job. That fellow is the executive chef at that restaurant right now. Here's my point. Here's my, here's my point. There are human souls behind the policy choices. And that is something Martha sees, and the Republican nominee does not. You know, when I was running for state senate in 2010, it was a tough race. We had a lot going on. We had a lot of people in the race. And Tom Menino actually came to me, which is unusual. I was afraid to go to him because he's Tom Menino. He came to me and he asked me, how can I help? And I said, whatever you want to do, I'll take any help you can give me. And he made phone calls for me. He called his people in different parts of Boston to be helpful to me. And I won that election by 138 votes, well, less than 1%. And I can honestly say, I can honestly say that if Tom Menino didn't come to me, I wouldn't be standing here just to say We impact you. We're making choices about your resources. And for me, the fact that, you know, there was, in Menino's early career as mayor, people, um, some people weren't very kind to him. Um, you know, they didn't think he was smart enough to be the mayor of Boston. He didn't sound smart enough. And didn't he have the last hurrah? Um, because, in fact, over his many years, what he really proved and affirmed, which I think is important to many of us, is representative democracy really is about electing us. It's about electing one of us, people who actually know us, who care about us, who know what's important to our neighborhoods, who know what's important to our children, to whether or not we have good air and clean air and whether or not we live in a safe neighborhood, is our city diverse? Are our schools good for everybody? That's who Tom Menino was. Tonight is it's such a night of, of loss for Boston, for politics, um, but it's also really a celebration. 
because when I think of Tom Menino, I just think about that, that legacy of love for his people. That's really what it was. He loved the people of Boston. Martha Coakley has fought her entire <coughs> career to be a voice for kids, for families. She knows whose side she stands on, and it's ours. It's just what you said, Marjorie. She's on our side, and she is authentic, and I had the great pleasure of getting to work for her in the AG's office. I, I would just say that you could not help but admire Tom Benino. Um, the connection that Tom made to communities, especially to communities that were underrepresented in the city of Boston, uh, set an example for all of us. He served as mayor of this great city and then represented us uh, on Beacon Hill for a number of years, Alice Wolf. Very pleased to be here with all of you and all of our friends and all of the people who are going to make a difference in Tuesday's election. You see, those who know, sometimes Tom Menino did not have a sense of humor. Um, if you ever did anything to mention anything about the city of Boston, and I had the fortune to speak at an event where, jokingly, I thought, um, Harvard was trying to move many of its graduate programs across the river. And so I get up and said, none of them wanted to go. We in the city council were getting letters from the law school, help us not get moved. So I jokingly got up in front of this group with Mayor Menino and said, I know how to resolve the issue. We just move the river further. We can call it Cambridge, and people will want to go there. Well, he did not have a sense of humor. <laughs> My next meeting with him was on the hands across the Mass Ave Bridge. And I, his arm went around me and said, I think you want to come to the mayor's office next week and meet with me. Uh, that I did. and. Um, it was a good relationship, but he did not have a sense of humor if anyone made comments relative to the city of Boston. 